So we have this problem on the board. We have a force here, John, and we're asked to find the force vector F as a Cartesian vector. So this is a very, very common thing. We have, for instance, a wall over here, a flat wall in this plane, and we have point A. And then we have some XY plane down here. That's what this is trying to represent. We have point B. And we have a rope tied from point A, and maybe you have someone standing over here or some kind of tension uh, device pulling on it. It's pulling with 900 newtons, but uh, the primary thing we're trying to get across here is the force vector is not starting at the origin. It starts from point A and it terminates at point B. What this really means is if I had a wall over there and I tied a rope to it and then I bring the other end of the rope in my hand, that rope is going to define a direction, A and B, and that's defining the direction. And then I pull on the rope with a force, in this case 900 newtons. So the force is directed along the direction defined by that rope. Uh, and we have a direction associated with it because the force is a direction, you know, beast, it's a vector quantity. And we want to figure out what is the vector representation of this force. We know it's 900 newtons, we know that's the magnitude. We know it goes from A to B, but in terms of I, J, and K, the X component, the Y component, and the Z component of this force, how do we write it as a Cartesian vector? So we're going to pursue it exactly as we have said before. We have a starting point and we have an ending point. So let's label those guys. Point A. So the coordinates of A in the x direction, A is 2. In the y direction, y is anything along this axis. It's actually 0 because we're in the plane here. And z, we're going up 4. So the point A here, the starting point is 2, 0, 0, 4. And then the B point, this is just going to help us visualize stuff here. The x component, notice that x is here. This is positive x. Anything over here is negative x. And I did not actually label it. This is actually 2. This distance from here to here, I've in intended to label this as 2 meters. So this distance right here in the negative x direction is negative 2. So we have negative 2, comma, the, uh, that's the x component. The y component is how far we travel this way, which we have labeled here as 7. And the z component is 0 because it's lying in the x, y plane like this. So make sure you understand that these coordinates of the a and b, they come straight from the drawing. And that's half the battle when you're doing any of these problems. You have to be able to interpret the x, y, z component of everything. Now, because the arrow is pointing from a to b, we're basically starting at point a in terms of defining a direction. And we're ending at point b. Okay, so if I wanted to define the position vector that points along this direction here from A to B, that direction vector, is, or that position vector is labeled R, and it's going to be the difference in the X components, the difference in the Y components, and the difference in the Z components, but the way we do the subtraction is we always start at the ending point. It's ending minus starting, so that's why I label it this way. So we start here, we say negative 2 minus this one, which is 2, and this is in the i direction, or the x direction. And then here, we start over here, 7 minus the 0 here, that's the y component. And the z component, we start here, 0 minus 4, in the k direction. Notice we have a bunch of subtractions, we have negative numbers occasionally and things like that. I always recommend that you write things out, at least in the beginning, because if you start trying to do everything in your head, you'll probably get it right most of the time, but you'll forget a negative sign somewhere, or you'll forget uh, that this is negative 4 here or something. If you do it backwards and don't realize it, it's better to write it out. And then in the next step underneath it, we'll change colors, and we'll say that our position vector r, now that we have it defined, I can actually take the parentheses away. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4 in the i direction. 7 minus 0 is just 7 in the j direction. 0 minus 4 is minus 4 in the k direction. Now, this actually doesn't have anything to do with the actual force that I'm pulling on the rope. This thing just defines the direction that the rope is kind of connected between, a to b. It's pointing along, assuming the arrow is pointing that way, even though the arrow is really associated with the force, we know that in the end, our final vector is going to be pointed that way, so we orient the way that we've done the subtraction in that same direction. So this is the full-blown vector that points from A to B. So I'll just kind of put over here a note. This is from A, point A to point B. Now, we don't actually use the position vector. We use a unit vector in this direction. Okay. So what would be a unit vector in this direction? 
In order to find that, we need to find what the magnitude of this position vector is. So we found the position vector. What is the magnitude? The magnitude of any vector is the square root of the components squared. Negative 4 squared plus 7 squared plus negative 4 squared. Okay? When you square this and you square this and you square this and you add all this together, you get the square root of 81, which is simply 9. So that's a nice round number. Now, the reason we're doing all this stuff is because we, in order to calculate the force vector along this line, we need to figure out, and I'll go ahead and write it over here, we need to figure out a unit vector in the r direction. Unit vector means it just has a length of 1, but it's pointing in the r direction. And that is going to be the position vector r that we already have divided by the magnitude of r. This uh, division here, it's, it's the same for any vector. Anytime you're finding a unit vector, you always take whatever vector you know points in that direction, divide by its magnitude. That chops all the components down so that you still retain the direction, but the magnitude becomes 1. So what we do then is we say r, this is the vector that we calculated. Let's write that down on top. Negative 4i plus 7j minus 4k. So this is a uh, position vector. Right? And then we divide by what is the magnitude of r? We just calculated that that's 9. And this, you know, vectors follow the rules of algebra more or less. You have a term here added to a term here added to a term here. The i and the j and the k, they're just markers that signify what direction we're talking about. So when you see a giant vector like this divided by a number, uh, all you have to do is divide each little term just like you would typically do. So what you have is negative 4 ninths in the i direction plus 7 ninths in the j direction minus 4 ninths in the k direction. So this is a unit vector. I'll put a little asterisk here just to re remind you that this is very important. This is a vector that points in the same direction that r points, the same direction of our rope, but the length of this vector has a length of 1. And the reason we need that is because the equation I gave you for the force directed along the line, the force directed along any line, is just the magnitude of the force that I pull with, however many newtons I'm pulling, times a unit vector in that direction. This takes the magnitude of the force and projects it in each of the three components, so then you get a full-blown force vector. So in our case, we're pulling with 900 newtons, and inside here I have negative 4 ninths i direction plus 7 ninths in the j direction minus 4 ninths in the k direction. So this is the vector, the unit vector. This is how much I'm pulling with. And so finally, at the end of the day, this can be distributed. This 900 can be multiplied into term by term, just like regular algebra. Even though this is a vector, it still gets distributed just like regular algebra. So here, what I'm going to have, the 900 gets multiplied here. 900 divided by 9 gives me uh, 100 times the 4 is going to give me uh, negative 400 in the i direction. Similarly, when I go here, I'm going to get 700 in the j direction. Similarly, when I go here, it'll be negative uh, 400 in the k direction. This divided by this gives me 100 times the 4 gives me 400. The unit of this is just newtons. It's the same old thing. So what we have here is a force vector, negative 400i plus 700j minus 400k. What this really means is I now have this force vector that I've drawn in a picture in terms of Cartesian vector. And what this means is this Cartesian vector has an x component, a y component, and a z component. So that means if I were to go back to this drawing, yes, it really is 900 newtons oriented this way, but now I know with more precision what's actually happening. See, I have negative 400 in the i direction means that some of the component is going, this is positive x here, so negative x is into the board. Some of the force is pointing that way, 400 newtons of it. And then here, 700 is in the... Uh, uh, j direction, which is in the y direction. Y in this drawing is along this direction here. So we have the largest component, 700 newtons in that direction. And then negative 400 in the k direction means negative z, which is pointing down, because this is positive z, so negative z is pointing down. Notice the vector is trending down, and that has uh, 400 newtons in that direction. So now, if this were part of a larger problem, you would have the force on that rope defined in terms of a Cartesian vector. Once you have things defined in vector form, you can do anything with it. You'll find that we'll be using these force vectors to calculate the moment about a point, which is kind of a rotation, a force of rotation around the point. We'll be using it for analysis of structures, 
uh, you know, from here till the end of time. That's basically what we're going to be doing. But it all stems from the fact that if you have a real wall here and a wall here and you tie this rope off and you pull on it, this is how you would take this force, convert it to Cartesian form. First thing is you have to define a position vector that goes and ends over here and starts over here. Then we find the magnitude of that. Then we take the, the, the uh, position vector, divide by its magnitude, that gives us a unit vector in that direction. And then finally we take that unit vector and multiply by the magnitude of the force in Newtons. This is the um, uh, Cartesian form of that vector. If we were to take the um, magnitude of this force vector, negative 400 squared plus 700 squared minus 400 squared, we get all that stuff, we take a square root to find the length of this vector, what do you think we're going to do? What do you think we're going to get? If you square each of these guys and you take the square root, you're getting the length of this vector, the magnitude of this vector, what do you think you're going to get? You're going to get 900 newtons. Whip out a calculator and do that and you'll find out that you get 900 newtons. It all should be self-consistent. So follow me on to the next section, we'll get some more practice with force directed along a line. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.